for it TV. The world is thinking. December 2004, an asteroid was discovered. By the way, asteroids are discovered all the time. This is not a new thing. Hundreds of asteroids are discovered each year. And some years, thousands get logged. Brand new asteroids, new to our awareness. This one was discovered. They calculated its orbit. And we found out that the orbit would come dangerously close to Earth. And the uncertainty in the orbit was such that its next time around, it might even hit Earth. And if it hit Earth at the center point of the uncertain orbits, so in other words, you, you run the computer model, and there's a range of orbits it could have based on your data. And you get better data, then that range gets narrower and narrower and narrower. But based on the data available at the time, there's a range of orbits. Within there, there was a tinier range of orbits where if it threaded that keyhole, it would hit us seven years after that. Why didn't you read about it when that happened? By the way, it would hit, if it went through the center of the keyhole, it would hit the Pacific Ocean 500 kilometers west of Santa Monica. I will describe the tidal wave it would make in just a moment, the tsunami that would be. Why didn't you hear about it? Because the week it was discovered was the week of the Indonesian tsunami. And so the odd thing, though, is that, right, the Indonesian tsunami duly grabbed the headlines. But if this asteroid hits, it would create a tsunami beyond measure. No, we can actually measure it. But, but beyond anything you'd ever seen, it would make the Indonesian tsunami look like a, the tide's just rolling in. And so we kept monitoring the orbit, trying to get a tune. And so here are the facts. On Friday, the 13th of April, in the year 2029, this asteroid named Apophis, Apophis, P-H, Apophis, that's the Egyptian god of death and darkness. <laughs> we didn't name that one Bambi, OK? <laughs> it obviously got named after we saw where it was headed. So. And I'm not ignoring you guys over there. I'm just trying to bring them into the conversation over here, <laughs> the right side of the room. So Apophis is the size of the Rose Bowl. Imagine the Rose Bowl were like an egg cup, and then you get an egg to fit in it. That's the size of this asteroid. On April 13th, the year 2029, it will come close enough to Earth to dip below our orbiting communication satellites. It will be the biggest, closest thing ever to come to Earth in, in, in our recorded history. Recorded meaning when we took records of events and things. Now, the uncertainty in that orbit includes what I'm saying was called the keyhole. A narrow region within these uncertainties. If it threads that keyhole, it will hit us seven years later, once again on April 13th. Although this time, not a Friday. It would be a Thursday that time. I'm pretty sure I looked it up. Thursday the 13th. You know, that would create a whole new legend of movies, you know. Thursday the 13th, you know. Uh, so what you want to do is make sure it doesn't go through the keyhole. Now, you got some people out there, just blow the sucker out of the sky, you know. These are the, the men who wield nukes because they, you know, they can justify your nuclear arsenal. But that's, that's not a good idea. Because you blow the thing to smithereen, now all the smithereens are headed towards you. And what would have hit in just one spot now takes out half the world. So, plus you don't know where it's going to go. Bombs are uncontrolled releases of energy. That's why they're bombs, okay? So you want to be able to control what this thing does. And one of, the, uh, one of the things to do is to deflect it from harm's way. So you've got top people working on deflection scenarios. But when you deflect it, you've got to be careful because it's still there. And you've got to look over your back. Next time it's around, you got to keep looking at it, okay? But if you have the power to deflect, you now have the power to not greet the same fate that the dinosaurs did 65 million years ago when an asteroid came and took them out, leaving them extinct. Because I don't want to be the laughing stock of the galaxy when they find out that a species that had a space program and the intelligence to stop an asteroid impact just simply went extinct. That'd just be embarrassing. I don't want, you know, it's okay for the dinosaurs. They had that pea brain and they didn't have opposable thumbs. They were not going to build a spaceship. So it's called Apophis. 
I would think of it as a coming attraction <laughs> on a continent near you. Uh, let me just end quickly. It, it, it plunges into the Pacific. It'll go about three miles down before it then explodes, um, cavitating the Pacific in a three-mile wide hole. So you have a hole three miles wide and three miles deep. Water does not like having holes in it. So the act of having made the hole sent a pulse of water to the shores all around. Then the water fills in the hole with such ferocity that the water rises back up high into the atmosphere, falls back down, cavitates another hole. There goes another pulse. And this will continue for dozens of times. It'll go to the shoreline. The wave will go to the whole entire North, North American coastline, and the wave will go in maybe about a quarter of a mile. Then it'll get pulled back out to get ready for the next wave. It's not one of these one-way marching tsunamis like the one in Indonesia. This one goes in and comes out. But if you had a home here, the home comes out, gets taken out. But now the wave comes back in. In comes your home again. But it doesn't have the shape that it had before. It's now... Debris. And so the debris becomes this mulching machine, this <laughs> sandblasting machine, this thing that, 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 that ablates the entire coastline, wiping it clean of all traces of civilization. So have a nice day. Thank you for your... <laughs> <laughs>